So for those of you who do know me, uh, do not know me, a lot of fresh new faces. Uh, my name is Sammy. I used to be a developer here as well. Uh, and now I'm working at a high frequency trading firm. Yeah? So there a lot of my work requires me to work with JavaScript. So we use a lot of Angular uh, to build interfaces for trades. Yeah? Okay. So right now, I'll just repeat and, and, and let you guys know what's, what, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, it's more about trying to understand some of the pitfalls that JavaScript might put you through if you do not understand the language in depth. Right? And then it will most likely help you in, in writing code better right? when you are working with JavaScript. Cool? So let's go to the first part. Functions and scope. I'm, I'm sure most of the developers, all developers will understand what is function and what's the scope, right? Function is a method that you would invoke. And scope is the environment where this code is being run and what are the variables and what it's a state. Okay? Uh, in Ruby, you, you have block scoping. So within the two brackets, anything within that would be a scope. Right? In JavaScript, it's functionally scoped. Right? Um, which means that, I'll show you right now. Uh, let's go and see how it how it looks like. Okay, so when we talk about scoping, what you can see is that here I, I have a, a code that most likely will resemble something that you guys would do. Uh, let's say I have a navbar, right, and its initial color is blue, yeah, and I want to change the color to whatever color when I update it to green or whatever, right? So I create a function, as you can see there. Can you probably increase the size of that? Okay, sure, sure. Should not be an issue. Okay, let's see. Uh. Command plus. Command plus plus plus. Okay. Can you see? Yes. Okay. So you have a nav bar. Wait, uh, let me just minimize this so that you can even see the console. Ah, okay. So we have an F bar, initial color, we set it to blue, right? And we have functions. So when I say it's functionally scope, right? Within this function, everything has its own scope. Okay? So now I set the color as pink. Yeah? And then I will log it and I'll say, tell me what the color is. Next, I have a function in here within that function. So that's interesting because functions are first class objects in JavaScript. So you can create function in functions. And then I will call the function to change my navbar color to green. Okay? And then I will ask it to log it out. But then I will step out of the function and then I will say, I will call this function, uh, this, this whole thing. I'll step out and then I'll say, tell me what the navbar color is. Okay? So let's see what, what it gives you and then we can try and understand what's happening here. So first, when this happened, I said the color is pink. <coughs> okay? And then I ran update and I asked for the color again and it told me the color is green. But when I step out of the function and I asked it what's its color, it will tell me it's blue. So as you can see, it's, it's functionally scoped. Yeah? So that's one. JavaScript objects are functionally scoped. They are not block scoped like we used to. That would be your biggest big fall. Uh. You will realize it when you try and write code. <coughs> Okay, but the thing is, right, the scope only goes downwards. It does not go upwards, meaning if I'm the parent function, I tell the child, I, I declare an object, I say navbar, right? My children can see, but my parents will not be able to see. So for, exa <coughs> for example, now the child is saying, oh, navbar color is pink. And then I, I come outside of the function and I say, hey, uh, what's the color, right? What's going to happen? It's going to throw me an error and say I cannot find it. So the parents will not know, right? Only the child will know. But then there's this other very interesting twist to JavaScript, and that is most likely the bane of a lot of people. Uh, the, uh, just give me a sec. Yeah, okay. Global objects. What happens, right, is that, see how I didn't put var, nebbar color? I just did this. 
the moment I declare a variable like this, right, it becomes a global. Meaning, if I were to clear this, and then I will just step outside the function and I ask, what's your color? It will tell me it's pink, right? This is one thing you don't want to do. Never do this, because the moment you do this, right, anybody else who writes a library, right, they accidentally do something like this, they are modifying your state. And then you'll be like, hey, what's happening? Why is it wrong? It's very hard to find out what's happening, yeah? So that's why coming back to the slides, you need to understand that JavaScript is very functionally scoped. Whenever you want to write a, a variable, try and put it in a function and leave it in there. <coughs> Don't let it bleed out here and there. Okay? So the next one was declaring variables without a var or create globals. Globals are a bad thing, period, right? Anywhere. Yeah? Okay. Now, next. Um, here's one interesting uh, fact. And then we will move to the next slide. What if I were to say, uh, give me the color now. What do you think will happen? What, okay, you can see what's happening, right? It's throwing you an undefined. Yeah? Now, let's try, let's run again. Okay, yeah, it's throwing you an undefined. Yes? But earlier on when I, when I talked about outward scoping, right, you saw that it threw you an error. It said that nav, nav bar color is not defined. This is a completely different error. Right? It's not gonna... It, basically what's happening here, right, is that in JavaScript there's this concept of hoisting. How many of you know what hoisting is? Okay. In hoisting, right, which it means uh, basically, let me show you what it looks like. Uh, let's do this. Let's say you were to do this in, in Rails, right? Do you think the function foo would be able to run? Would it be able to find it? If I, if I run it first and then I declare it. Yeah. It happens, right? What happens in JavaScript is the same thing. You can always call the function first and then declare it later. What JavaScript does, if you have to go to online websites, right, some sites will tell you that they bring that function up to the top, the declaration to the top. Um, that's not the case. The code stays where it is. It's just that the compiler will allocate memory for that function and say, okay, this function, I give you some memory. So when you call it, right, like upstairs here, it's able to find it and then execute whatever the code is, okay? So that's what um, hoisting is. So it's the same thing for, for variables, right? If let's say I have this variable here, I have my var, I'm, de I'm initializing it, uh, I've not declared it, and I'm asking it to console log my var, and then I will declare it. But it's still it's able to find it. Why? Because of hoisting. But here is the tripwire, okay? When you declare, JavaScript compilers will hoist it for you. But when you initialize it, uh, it won't hoist it for you. Let me show you what the difference is between declaration and initialization. Okay? What you see here, this is an initialization. I'm saying this object has this state. So I'm initializing. This is a declaration. I'm saying this object exists. The moment I put them together, right, and I say, create an object and give it this state, JavaScript won't be able to hoist it for you. And then he will throw you an error. <coughs> Let's try. All of this because it's Sorry, 
for you. One comment. Okay. See? So you can't, you can't find it for you. Right? As compared to the earlier one, where it gave you that value. So the issue here, right, is that if you do something like this, then you won't, you won't be able to hoist it. And then you will have these errors. You'll be like, hey, I declare it, but it's not being found. Why is this so? And then you look up in your code and you're like, I, do I did the same thing, you know, I'm declaring. But then there's this distinction that you might not be aware of. Right, what a declaration is and what an initialization is. So you need to be very careful around things like this. Okay? And it's the same thing for functions. Right? <coughs> if I did the, the same thing and I called the function first, and then I initialized it and declared it at the same time, it will throw me an error and say, hey, uh, I cannot find it. Why? Because it just cannot hoist it. So that is the other pitfall. These are some of the things that I faced initially, right? And I would I'll get errors like this and I'll be like, what's happening? Why can't I get it to work? Where in, in the other case, it almost looks similar, but there are small nuances here and there that you might not be aware of. So this is one of them. Yeah? Okay, next. So we talked about hoisting. We talked about functional scoping. The next one that I wanted to talk about is uh, passing a variables. This is another tripwire that we will face quite regularly. When, when someone asks us <coughs> to, uh, in JavaScript, is it passed by value? You all know what passed by value is, right? Yes, anybody knows what it means and doesn't know what it means? It's okay to say you don't. Okay, so uh, when you talk about passing of variables, in, in any, any sort of computing, any sort of code, you will tell, uh, hey, take this object and then do this, and then go to our function, you, you, you do this, correct? So you're passing the variables, right, the value. Um, there are two ways to do it. One is you just pass the whole thing and you say, here is that thing, I give it to you, and then you modify it how you want. At the end of the day, you will modify that value. But the other way is to say, like in computing, right, you would have pointers and you would say, okay, here is the reference to that object, you go and modify it, okay? One is a copy, one is the exact object I'm just telling you, hey, you have access to it, okay? So, in JavaScript, everything is passed by value. Some people might come and tell you, oh, no, objects are passed by reference, but values are passed by value, right? Uh, that's not the case. Everything is passed by value. It's just that in JavaScript, you have a concept of passed by reference value. So, what I'm saying is this. Let's say I have two boxes, and I put things in there. If that thing, it's a primitive, your strings, your, not, your integers, or your numbers in this case. Uh, then what's going to happen is, when I pass it, I will say, here is the whole box. I'll give you the whole box, you can change it. I'll give you a copy of that box actually. So I'll say, okay, what's in this box? Okay, let me create one and I pass it to you, and you change. In the other way, it, for objects, I would say, um, that is where the box is, but if you change it, right, if you overwrite it, you won't change what's inside. You will change the reference that I told you how to get to that box. Am I clear? Or is it a bit confusing? I can, I can really try it again. So pass by value is saying, for example, I can show you now. Uh, it's easier to see when, when, when you see it in code. For example, passing ref Okay, here we go. Um, same, uh, actual example. I have a function that changes a job of a person. I pass it the person, and I say you change the person's job to president, right? Then I create my object and I say, Sunny, his current job is a clown, right? And then I run the function. First, I will log, right? I will say, what is my current job? Then again, I will change my job, and I will log what is my new job, okay? So let's try and run. As you can see, I changed the object that I am. I've changed my properties, right? Now it would seem as if, in what, what, you, what you would see it as is, oh, I have this object, and then I passed it to this function, and this function of modified the original object. That is correct, but I'm not actually passing you the object. I'm telling you that this is the address of the object, you can go to the address and you can modify it. I'm only passing you the address, <coughs> okay? Which means, if I were to go and do this,
right? As you can see, I, I'm still the same. I've not been modified. Why? Because I changed what the value of the address was, <coughs> not the actual object. Do you see it? Anybody don't see it? See this? It would, for some people, for me initially, I knew that I, it would seem like as if I'm, I'm changing the object, but why is it not going to foo, right? Why is it not behaving that way? Because I didn't understand this concept, right? I'm only changing the address, not changing the object, okay? So let's do that. Let's pass by value reference. Then there is this one where it's pass by value. Now pass by value is very easy to understand. I pass you something, you just change what it is. For example, now I have changed job two, but then I'm a bit, a bit more smarter about things. I was like, why do I want to even pass the whole person object? I just pass the job up and I change the job, right? Then that's where you might trick because I have job here. I'm changing job to cowboy. I create the object head. I give him a property called job, right? I get his current job. So let's clear this up and then let's run. I get his current job, right? I change this job. But then, when I, come, when I come back and I try and log in, I still see the same thing. Then you're like, eh? but I changed it. And that's where it's, it's a, a little different in the sense that it's passed by value. I'm just changing what he's looking at, that's all. Okay? So, do you, do you see the nuances of this? Right? It's, it's very subtle in that sense. Right? Uh, but when you play around with it, you would, you would get a better grasp of it. When you pass objects, you can modify it, but whatever the, the variable is that you passed, if you change it, then it just changes locally to that function because of that scope. Okay? And it, it won't bleed out and, and, and modify the outside guy. Yeah? Cool? So that's the, that's the next one that uh, usually causes people to trip. So when, when you face issues like this, right, you want to see what are you passing? Are you passing the object? Are you modifying the property of the object? Or are you overwriting the object? Yeah, those are the questions that you will need to ask yourself uh, when you see issues like that. Yeah? Then the next one, this is the last one. This is the easiest. Uh, there are through the uh, values and falsy values. Okay, everything is through the except for this five. Now we can look at what, what it means, right? In code, it's easier. It's a bit messy, but uh, it gets the... You don't need to look at this because this is more complex. Uh, you just need to see this. It's in English. Okay. When I pass false, it's coerced into false, meaning this is a falsy value. I can run Boolean operators on it. I can say if false, then I can do whatever I need to. Is it loosely equal to false? Yes, obviously it is false, right? So that's fine. But the next few are the ones that are a bit tricky. Things like zero is coerced into false, right? Is it loosely equal to false? Yes. This is where in companies like us, we, we have tripwires like this. Because zero can be a price. If there is a price, then I want to do something about it, right? But here you would say there is no price because it's a falsy value. So then, you know, these are small trip wires that you might not have seen, right? So this is where you would see things like, oh, okay, okay, I need to make sure that I need to check whether it's a zero or not. Yeah? The next one, empty string. Empty string is also coerced into false, right? Is it loosely equal to false? Yes. So that means if you had an object and you changed, you empty the object's name, for example, then you might have an issue. Right, because you say, oh, I, I do not see any. Right, so you need to think about it in that manner. You need to check what the actual value is, and you need to understand what if it's a truly or a falsy value. Then things like undefined is false. Is it loosely equal to false? No. This is very interesting. Why? Because undefined means it's not there. But if I were to try and double equal it into a false, for example, here. It will tell me no, it's not. So I have to be um, very wary of this. 
right? Just because it's undefined doesn't mean it's not there. Okay, so be careful about this. The next one is also the same. No, it's coerced into false. Uh, is it loosely equal to false? Uh, no. So yeah, uh, it's very very odd in that sense. Uh, so usually what you want to do things, when, when you talk about coercing, you are talking about is it a falsy value, you can use that. But if you were to say uh, things like uh, false equal equals to null, then no, it will tell you no, it's not. Because these are two different objects. There's, these are two different types. False is a boolean, null is a null object. It's an object. So it won't allow you to do this. Okay? Very interesting. Uh, NAN. You know what NAN is? Not a, Not a number. Yeah. So NAN, is it coerced into false? Yes. Right? Uh, is it loosely equal to false? No. So these are some of the truthiness tripwires. And and it's only true like doing this a few times and tripping away a few times, right? You will understand the nuances of it all. Um, and that's why uh, I, I did this because to me it is if you can get over this hump, this initial hump of not understanding why is it behaving so erratically, right? Uh, then you will try and pick it up a lot more and you want to work on it a lot more. Yeah? So, yeah, so that's about it for me now. Um, if you have any questions, you can let me know and then I can try and help you guys so you can understand. It. Yes? How about using the triple equal? If you use triple equal, that's a strict equality check, yeah. right? It would still be false, right? It would still be a false from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. So what I was doing here, I was doing a loose check, right? Usually you would do things like this. Uh, the triple is type. Yeah, it's type because it checks what type. The type. Is yes. yes. Um, double does not. But the thing is that if you were, if I were to expand this, right? And I have to just look at any one. If I were to run, I have to pass it into a boolean and then try to cast it right. It would tell me it's not. Uh, it's it's a false value. So usually, when you want to use things like this, you would go and do stuff like, for example, uh, I wanted to console or lock something. Okay, let's try it. Var a equals to now. And then, uh, so if so, usually, initially, I used to do this back then. I was a bit dumb, but uh, we all learn. Uh. And then I'll be like, Why is it not running? Why is it not working? Like, right? I mean, it's supposed to behave and show me something. If, if it's not, then it should throw me an error or something. But it's not. So the easiest way for you to do right is to do this. It's to say, yeah, let's see what's happening on the console. So now, it behaves the way I want it to behave. Okay. So, for example, uh, mm. 
not the gold one still will pass. Okay, I don't know, I forgot about that. Okay. So yeah, so initially this was the issue. I, I, I didn't see it. Um, okay, so let's try. I said that A is not equal to false. I consult a lot hello. Right? If it's now I would assume it to be false. Right? But then it does not behave the way I want it to be. Right? There are other very different case scenarios that you will come across. Like, but they are along these lines. Where I assume it to be false, but it's not. Right? So what you need to do is to check for the object itself. And then check the truthiness of it. So when you do if things like this, right, you will try and type cast it into a boolean like that okay so yeah um, that is oh uh, so I hope that answers your question right um, in, in scenarios where in actual work you need to go and check for a value try and do this instead of checking it against a false or a true yeah any other questions I always think, uh, I have a question. Uh -huh. So you initialize, okay. then you use it, and then you declare it, right? Yes. What if you don't declare it? Would it matter? Uh, yeah. So let's try. Let's see what happens. Um, because the thing is, right, it's only declaration that is hoisted. Uh -huh. So, wait a um, So you're saying that this is what I want to do, right? A equals to hello. Yes. Correct. Yes. And then console dot log A. Yeah. This is because it's the global, so it's accessible, right? So that's why it's working. Now, if you put it in function, Pass A and then we tell it okay. I'm assuming it would work, but the thing is, this is dangerous because. It's a global. Do you get me? Okay, remember how I said that if you were to declare without the bar, mm -hmm. it turns this into a global? Oh, so it's accessible outside of Yes. Right? And that's why it's printing. Um, which means that. So you can console that log a outside the function. You can. Um, and it will print the hello. Yes. Because of the fact. So these are like you know it's a series of these things, right, that will help you, will make you trip and fall. Huh? Um, okay now it's throwing errors. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, let's try now. Let's see what, what, what it shows. Okay, so first it shows you the console.log A. But if I have to remove this, then I run it again. Let's split this, split this. A is not defined. So. But it's kind of hoisted outside the function. No, no, this won't hoist it outside the function. When, when, when you say you are declaring it inside, right? Uh -huh. You are effectively creating a global object. Anywhere that, that for example, let me show you in the global variables. You see? I did not. So what this does is that it declares it as a global, anybody can access. It creates and then it declares it as, as a global object, and then anybody can access it. So that's why you can still find that object. 
But if let's say you were to say, for example, inside scoping, right? Uh, let's see, huh? Yeah, popular is here. I have to remove this. Then you would get undefined. Okay. Um, you were asking whether if I do not do this, can it can it be console dot log, right? If I do not do the Yeah, correct. Let's see. Uh, let's try. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't try that yet. So, so you run update. This is you. You still see, right? Largely because this is a global now. Right now, if I move it out, because it's a global, you can still see. Right, so the thing is that if you were to look at hoisting here, and you were to ask, uh, yeah, let me just expand this. The difference is this, okay? Where I do this, you see? Now it throws you an error. Because I am calling for that function, I have initialized that function, but I have not declared it. So you, the position is the one that, that... So now I get it. Okay. So the difference between this and, and the other one. Okay. So this is what you see now. Huh? Yeah. I have full three. I am calling for that. that I'm asking it to log the, the object. Uh -huh. And then I am initializing. And in that case, it does not throws me an error. Yes. Correct. Yes. Whereas in the other one, I have already de you declared it. I already initialized it, not declared. Uh, initialized. Yes, I've already initialized it, and I tried looking for it. So you will be able to find as a global, right? So if I were to bring this up on top of this guy, then you would get your error. your error. Yeah. The last one. So, yeah, so these are some of the, that's why you would, you would trip a lot on this, but uh, if you play around with it, right, you'll be able to figure out some of these things. Yo, uh, yeah, any, any more? So, so if you initialize at the top, you will not have any issues? Yeah, that's usually recommended. So for guys like us, when we work, right, uh, we would say initialize everything at the top because then I have a picture of the, the, the objects in this function. And it's okay to initialize out of the function. It is okay to initialize out of this function. Question is, are you initializing up here? In the global? Uh, right? If it's here, I would say no. Because now anybody, because this, this guy is in the scope of the global, right? Anybody can go and modify this value here. But if you were to ask me, in cases like this, I have a parent, and then I have a child function, then it's okay to bring it, to leave it outside first. If you need it outside somewhere here, outside of this child. But if not, bring it in there, and then you declare it in there. So that you, it's, uh, there's this principle. Uh, basically, it, you only expose things to guys who need to see, right? So, if, let's say netbar color only needed to be run in update, then you would declare it in here. Do not declare it outside. Yeah? Anybody else? Questions? Any questions, Gerald? <laughs> About hoisting and functional scoping and passing of variables and trueness? Sorry, I missed the first part. Can you like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so this is how you do it. Yeah. 
So, so these are some of the pitfalls. Hopefully it helps you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Right. And use Copen. Copen is the easiest place to play with. Thanks.